man, a wonderful little streamer fly today. This is the Bex Super Bugger. Uh, this was created by Kathy Beck some years ago, and it is a very, very popular little stream streamer, especially in warm water circles, because it's got a lot of bulk and a lot of movement to it. The body is nothing is made up of nothing but soft hackles that are palmered up the hook shank. It's got a lot of weight, so it gets down there, a little bit of flash here and there in it, and tons and tons of movement. Great sculpin pattern. I fish this all the time around here in the smallmouth streams. I think a little bit smaller size also works really well for trout. It's a simple fly to tie, especially if you already know how to tie woolly buggers. Do a little bit of dubbing. So that's the back super bugger. I'll go ahead and get started. Start the back super bugger by placing my hook in the vise. It's using a 9672 or an R74, it's the new model number and a size 6 for this. The original was actually on a shorter shanked hook, like a uh, 3906B, a 1X long nymph hook. I like a little bit longer body on this, so that's why I'm going to use it. You could do this on a 9671, so if you wanted just, you know, a little bit shorter fly, you could do that. Debarb the hook. I'm going to attach my thread. For thread, I'm using a 140 denier UTC in olive. I get a little bit of wax on my thread. It's going to help me just kind of hold on to the hook shank and the dumbbell eyes that I'm tying in in just a second. I'm going to start my thread about an eye length behind the eye of the hook. just want to make a little bit of a bump right here. This is where the dumbbell eyes are going to sit up against that I'm tying in. You can use a number of different dumbbell, dumbbell eyes if you want to for this. I'm using some, these are just Wapsi uh, lead dumbbell eyes that are painted red. I'm going to place those on the hook shank. Get a few wraps in one direction. Turn them 90 degrees. Get a few wraps in the other direction. And then repeat that. And I'm going to bring wraps around that are over the hook shank, but under the dumbbell eyes to cinch all those thread wraps in the middle. I want to make certain that they are the cross piece right here in the dumbbell eyes is about a good eye length behind the eye of the hook. I want just a little bit of space up here for some dubbing to finish off the fly. I'm also going to add in some head cement right here and this is just to help reinforce those eyes a little bit keep them from moving around on the resulting fly super bugger is, is a very simple basic fly it's a marabou tail with some crystal flash the body is some soft hackles so i'm going to start this with an olive marabou i'm going to get some of this fluff out that i know i won't need I want to collect those down and I'm going to tie those in so they're at least the length of the hook. Maybe just a hair longer. I'm going to tie those in, wrap those in real sturdy. I'm also going to come up the hook shank on that marabou, binding it in just a little bit as I get up towards the eyes here. And that's going to just give me a little bit more bulk underneath. I'm going to secure those down. Now I'm going to tie in some crystal flash. You can use flashaboo for this if you want. I like the crystal flash. It has a little bit more uh, sparkle to it. I'm going to get probably somewhere in the neighborhood of six to eight strands of crystal flash. 
bring those up underneath the thread to my side, pulling those to my right just a little bit. I want to be right about the middle of them. A few wraps up the hook shank to secure those in. And then a few more wraps down. And I can bring the crystal flash over to the other side and bind it in just on the other side. I'm going to trim the crystal flash a little bit longer than the marabou tail, but I want to trim them different lengths. I don't want them all just uh, one abrupt cut. So even if some of these end up just a little bit longer, that's fine. That will give me a little bit more flash back behind that tail. Just adds to the attraction of the fly. As I said, the body of this is mostly made with a grizzly soft tackle it's hard to you can get them hairline has what's called a grizzly soft tackle uh, that they promote for this particular fly the length on them if you can get a good package of them aren't too bad i'm using a whiting's soft tackle with chickapoo i like these because the feathers themselves the length on most of these feathers it's really, really good to get a, a nice full body on this. You could also, if you want, if you're, especially if you're tying this on a little bit smaller sized hook, use the chickapoo up in the end here for the, the tail, just to give it a little bit more contrast if you want. Now I've selected three different feathers. One thing you'll notice here, if I can hold these up and you can see them, these feathers are different sizes. I've got one, right here that's going to start the, the fly, one for the middle and one for the end. These, the barbs on these are three different lengths. They're not all the same. You don't have to do this, but it's my preference to do this when I can, when I have hackles that, that will do this, because then I get just a little bit of slight taper from the back to the front. What you're going to do, you want to keep some of the fluff right here, so right where the rachis here starts to get thick, right about here, I'm going to cut that, pinch this together, don't worry if it's messy, and I'm going to secure that on the hook shank. The extra fluff or down barbs that are on this are simply going to add to the fly, so you want to leave some of those in. I'll advance my thread forward just a little bit. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and bring it up here so it's more out of the way of the point of the hook. Attach my hackle pliers. I'm just going to start wrapping this in. Each wrap just goes in front of the previous wrap. You do want to stroke these a little bit to try and keep from any barbs getting hung up on the hook shank and covered up. Just gives it a little more a body to it, makes it a little fuller. And that essentially is it. This is the fly. I mean, there's the tail, and then there's the head and some rubber legs we're going to put in. Once you get to the end of that feather, Unwrap your thread back down to where that feather is. Secure the tip. Wrap that in well. You can probably break this off. And then sweep that back, wrap down right up against it. Now, I like to put some head cement in here just because there's nothing really protecting the uh, rachis of that feather so this will just help keep it from all unraveling a little bit so the next steps are basically the same i'll take that medium-sized feather and do the same thing and then i've got the larger one
I've got my last hackle wrapped in as a, for the body here. You can see by choosing those feathers, I have a nice little bit of a taper. Part of the reason I like that is I, my favorite way of fishing this fly is just bouncing along the bottom as like a sculpin. So having a little bit of taper there, maybe a little more bulk up here as this goes through the water and as it pulsates a little wider up here, I think helps to kind of give that more of a sculpin look to it. Now I'm going to put in some silly legs right here. I'm using some hairline predator legs. These are a barred pumpkin. These are very, very long. So I'm just going to choose one leg out of here and I'm going to double this over to make two. And then I'm going to double that over again, and that gives me the four that I need. I want two on each side. I'm going to secure these right behind the dumbbell eyes. I want to trim these so they're, if eh, those are already done, they're about the same length as the tail. Now you could have just, I could have left these and, and tied these in and doubled them over like I've done uh, on others. It really isn't as important because all of this is going to get covered up with some ice dove here. So these are a little bit long, so I'm going to trim those so they're just a little bit beyond the tail there. The silly legs are nice because they will float as this is swimming through the water, and when it stops, they tend to drift upward. So to finish off the head, you could use some other dubbing if you want. I think in the original video that Barry Beck did, he used a dubbing brush, a pre-made dubbing brush. The Gleesey's got some, and some other manufacturers have some, or you could make your own. I'm just going to use some ice dub here. This is going to more or less help with kind of giving the front a nice profile around those eyes, covering up all those thread wraps, as well as giving a little bit more flash like the crystal flash in the tail. You want to just do a, a long, thin dubbing needle to cover this up. We're going to do a number of crisscross wraps around the dumbbell eyes because we want to make certain we get crisscross wraps. So we're covering all the lead wraps down inside here as well as the lead wraps on the top. You make some couple of long, thin dubbing noodles with this ice dub, it's very forgiving in terms of adding this in and shaping this so that we have kind of a nice bullet profile, a little bit fatter in the back coming down to the eye of the hook. I like to kind of pile on a little bit back here. And then I'll do a final one that's kind of thin. Do a couple more crisscross wraps and then come around and end right in front of the eyes. Hopefully have a wrap or two right in front of the eyes up against those dumbbell eyes and then just finish off behind the eye of the hook. Just makes it kind of have a nice little taper as it works its way around those dumbbell eyes and then down to the eye of the hook. Four or five turn whip finish. Okay. 
you could take a dubbing brush and brush some of that out if you want to kind of fade that into those hackles a little bit. But as soon as you start bouncing this around down in the water, that's exactly what's going to happen. Add cement. X super bugger is done. Pretty straightforward. It is very, very bulky. A lot of action in the water on this one. As I said, a lot of movement on this. Good colors for this are brown. You could do a, a black as like a mad tom or something. The olive I like as a sculpt and maybe even a burnt orange as a crawdad or something. And a tan also is a very good color. Smaller hook, say size eight, maybe even a 10. Smaller eyes, hackles and everything else in um, I think tan and olive also would be really, really good for trout. So that is the Bex Super Bugger. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.